Tribe Show podcast on a Tuesday. I'm your host, Travis Fulton. Thank you for making us part of your day. Big, big week on the PGA Tour. We've got you covered. We're going signature event this week, the Memorial. Mirfield Village. And then big major championship, the third of the year, U.S. Open. That's at Pinehurst. And then we go back to a Siggy event, a signature event up in Hartford at the Travelers. And guess what? Our man, he's on the road for all three, and he's sitting there at Mirfield Village. Please tell me you've got a milkshake in hand, Mr. Keith Stewart. How you doing, buddy? I uh, I, I was going to reward. I'm, I'm doing well, Travis. It's a pleasure to be with you on a Tuesday afternoon. I was going to reward myself after this show with a milkshake. So I am sans okay. milkshake currently. Okay. Got, got to put the carrot out there, you know? Yeah, well... You got to get a couple of those. I mean, those are those are tasty. I know that's a hot item uh, this week on on uh, property. Seventy three players. Uh, they're there. Signature event. We'll get to it here in a minute. A lot to unravel. This is a this is a busy day uh, in golf. I just all right watched Xander Shoffley's uh, press conference, which we'll get to. He he didn't hold back on some on some comments. But uh, on a serious note, uh, you guys uh, this morning uh, they had a little service for uh, Grayson Murray there on site. Did they not? They did, yes. The uh, the tour put something together. Um, mm-hmm. There's a there's a wonderful memorial garden which is adjacent to the first tee box here at Muirfield Village Golf Club, and um, you know two or three hundred people were in attendance that are all here. Tour officials, all the players and caddies that are on property, everyone came and sat down. And um, Jay spoke and some other tour officials and some players and some caddies, um, and they did a t- very nice tribute to Grayson. Mm-hmm. And um, and a and, and a wonderful remembrance to a, to a tremendous tremendous player. Yeah, yeah, two time winner uh, on the PGA Tour, and um, just a sad sad story uh, all the way around. Uh, taking his life there a couple weeks ago, but uh, the you know we just kind of we, we remember who he was and um, celebrate his life, and and we move on. I guess here with a, another tournament on the PGA Tour, another week. This one uh, this one's got a has got quite the history. I was I was looking oh, yeah. back, and um, I can remember you know watching this tournament when I was young. Jack Nicholas, of course, he's the man uh, behind Muirfield Village. They call it the Memorial. And um, you know, look, it's it's kind of the same tournament, I guess. It's not a full field, but it is the Memorial. Um, it has been well attended in the past by the best player. You know, Tiger has won here a hundred times, and and so forth. Yep. Um. You know, you go back to Victor Hovland, who won here last year. Billy Horschel, uh, you, you recall, won back in 2022. Patrick Cantlay's got a couple wins here. Hideki Matsuyama, he's in the field. He's got a victory here. Um, so it's a, there's some big names on there. Um, but there's also some names that you maybe, you know, wouldn't expect, right? I mean, David Lingmurth won here, did he not? He did. He did. And so did William McGirt. But I can guarantee William you this. Dirt those- McGirt. Yeah, the Dirt McGirt man. Uh, but but I, could, I can guarantee you this year that uh, you'll know their name because it's signature status, and those guys aren't there. <laughs> Quite yeah, simple. yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, those guys. <laughs> those those guys are not there. And um, yeah, we'll get to the top of the board here in a second. And you know, you, you got the guys like Scotty Scheffler and the defending champ Hovland is here, and more. was playing well, and uh, you know, Rory's playing some good golf, and. You start looking down the list, and I was doing my research, and I was like, man, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how far down the board I can go this week. Now, look, yeah. Billy Horschel won with some odds, and we mentioned Lingmurth and McGirt, and those were some big odds. But just how far down the board can we go? Before we get to that, I, I want to I want to talk about Xander's press conference. I mean, he, he had some things to say here now. I mean, uh, this is – um. You know, Xander, look, he, Xander's grown on me here in the last couple, Ooh, I in like the last that. month All or right. two. Okay. You, know, you and I have talked about Xander a lot over the years. We do. I, I we just, do. I, I didn't like what I was seeing from Xander um, there much of okay. last year. I didn't like how just the vibes around the Ryder Cup and him and Cantley and, and his dad's kind of calling the shots here and there. And I just thought it yeah. affected Xander off the course and on the course. And I was like, man, I'm out. I'm out on Xander Shoffley. And then all of a sudden, you know, look, his dad's done a lot of good things for him, but he's 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 sure. disconnected from the camp. Uh, Chris Combs come in, did a nice job. He's helped him develop his his game a little bit. And and 
And I just like what I'm seeing with Xander on the golf course. And I like what I'm seeing off the course. I like the way he he's presenting himself. I think he's, um, I think he's a little bit more humble. He seems a little bit more hungry and it's transpiring to, uh, you know, second place at Wells and then his first major championship at the PGA. And now we fast forward and here he is, um, in with the mic in front of him and I'm pulling up some of the quotes here and I'm taking this from uh, nuclear golf on Twitter. And, you know, Xander, some of the thoughts here, and I'm not, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I just want to read a paragraph or two. And I, I just want to get your thoughts here on, on sure. this Keith. The first is, you know, Xander saying that, look, he's criticized Jay in the past, but the fact is not once as a commander in chief stood up for all of his players and said, this is happening. This is where we're going and protected us. Basically. He didn't take a stand. Speaking of Jay, this is Xander speaking. Sure. He didn't take a stand when anyone has left. He didn't come out to the public and face the music. None of that. Historically, in tough situations, you need a strong leader who can make big waves smaller and make us feel better about what we're doing. Right now, we don't have that. And so he continues on. And so he had some strong words, you know, for a commissioner and basically saying, where's our leader? Where's our leader during these tough times, these big waves and make it smaller? Drive the ship through what we're doing. I've mentioned in the past, Jay seems very absent to me. Um, and, and now here you have one of the best players coming off his first major champion out there kind of saying the same things. Has that kind of shook the grounds there a little bit on site on, on property, you think? Well, I, I think that, uh, being that it's a signature field, everyone here knows Xander very well. So I, I don't think that this would be a new sentiment for him in the locker room. So I don't think that that's really shaking the ground or is, is stirring that many bushes. You know, certainly the media will do their best to, to, um, try and create as much controversy as they can. But I think it's a, I think it's, it's an interesting thing for him to say. And I think Xander's completely warranted to do it. And, and here's why, because if you go back to the fall, people were critical of Xander of not being his own decision maker, not being his own leader of his own camp. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And that's where you started the soliloquy. Right. So you were saying, you know, like you wish that Stefan, his dad wasn't as involved and that Xander needed to stand up and he needed to kind of set a precedent for what he was going to do with his career. Well, Xander made those tough decisions and That's leaders right. have to do that from time to time and then look at the results. So if we if we take the microscope and we only turn it backward, right, then we can be super critical and and it's warranted about the way that this whole thing has been rolled out and the way it continues to be rolled out in secret. Right. But I, I would be more like, why don't we use Xander as an example of what you can do is if you start to make some hard and fast decisions and you stand up for yourself and your <clears throat> camp or your brand or your company or whatever it is, and then you act those things out and you see what happens, you know, like um, Xander, I mean, this thing could have gone sideways. The Chris Como thing couldn't have worked. He wouldn't have nine top tens. He wouldn't have a major championship. I mean, all of that could have gone the other way, but he, he leader, great leaders are decision makers at the end of the day, right? They bring vision to reality. And the only way to do that is to be tough. And, you know, we're all hopeful that something like this or more commentary along these lines will make the tour more transparent. Um, but time will tell. As far as I'm concerned, um, I'll give Xander all the credit in the world to say, hey, he's earned the right to say this because of what he's done in his own life. So good for him. Yeah. Well, I think he, he, I think he would have went out a little, I think he would have went about it a little bit differently a year or two ago. And that was some of my uh, critique. But I do feel like Xander now is a little bit more transparent. He's taking control of uh, what's happening uh, around his game more so. Um, and disconnecting from his dad and, and I think trying to push it forward with Chris and, and other things. So, like I said, we, we, we've kind of hashed that out over the last couple months and, yeah. and what we like there in the growth. And I think it's a, an interesting parallel now to, you know, to Jay, right. And the commissioner yeah. of the PGA tour, Jay Monahan. that's been my, that's been my critique is where is Jay Monahan? Where is the commissioner at during these difficult times? Why isn't he out in front? And I, and I just compare him to what we've seen now in the last few months, you go back to Fred Ridley, who, you know, to me, when he's in front of the microphone and he's speaking, you, you feel like, yeah, you want to follow that. You feel like they're in control. You feel like they have a good beat on what's happening. Uh, they, yep. they have a, a firm understanding of how the masters fits within the landscape of, of golf moving forward. Yeah. There's some moving parts, but it, it um, you know, Fred feels out in front and it feels confident. It feels like you want to be a part of that. 
Seth Wall, I think, has done a great job at the PGA. When he speaks, I think people listen. And, sure. and I think he's done a nice job with the positioning of the PGA and, and through that. Um, you know, Mike Wan, look, you open mic night. Man, Mike Wan's going to grab that mic, and he is going to go. I mean, he is going sure. to take the mic, yeah. and he is going to speak. And you know what? You're probably going to listen, right? He And he's and he's got a vision, and, and he's going to be out in front and where it wants to go. And I think Mike Wan took over, you know, some – some bumpy times for the USGA, right? And has got it sure, moving yeah. uh, in the right direction of the job that he did with the LPGA. I think yeah. Jay comes in kind of behind that. And it's like, where is Jay Monahan and the commissioner of the PGA tour and out in front and saying, Hey, here's what's happening. You know, I don't have all the answers, but, but here's where we're going. Here's what it looks like. Be a little bit more transparent. I know some things are always going to be behind closed door, but I, I tend to agree with Xander on this. I really do. I've been saying it for a while, and I think Xander out in front, I think he's speaking for some players in the locker room. I think there's going to be more to come. Got to get out and lead, man. You got to get out and, and, and be a front guy and say, hey, here's what we're doing. You may not like it, but here's where we're going. You want to go with us, right, and get excited about it. And that's what I hear from Ridley and Waugh and Juan, and I just think Jay's too absent. All right, so let me ask you a question. Let's say starting tomorrow, let's say Jay listened to this podcast and he becomes hyper-motivated to stand up and to do all of those things. Would you still keep him? Or or is it all done? Well, I don't know. I mean, look, he, he's, it, I mean, it sounds like he's he's been given a raise with this new PGA Tour Enterprises, which is hard to understand and what, and what that all means, right? And you've got people jumping ship off the board. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of moving parts. I know it's not easy. Um, but you're the commissioner, you know, this is what you signed up for. And, and now sure. given the turmoil, given how badly the PGA tour has been wounded, um, through live golf and now PGA tour enterprises is here. And what does that mean with the new investment group? Like, I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. I think there's still way more questions than answers. And I just don't think that's the sense with some of these these other major businesses and entities in Augusta national in PGA in USGA. And I don't think they're doing everything right. I mean, we all have our weaknesses, but I do see them and I do hear them. And I don't get that from the PGA tour. And that's frustrating. I can only imagine, um, I can only imagine what it's like to be a player like Xander and, and, and others and saying like, you know, what exactly is the hell still going on? Right. Because they're, they're supposed to be an agreement in place and how are we? So, you know, I, I just, I like where Xander's at. You know, I, I like where he's going. I give him a lot of credit. It's easy to say. Yeah. I mean, the guys, I, I give him a lot of credit. Yeah, it's easy to, it's easy to say, but look, we've been talking about this for a while and we, it, no, least, I mean, at least me, I was critiquing him last year. I didn't like what I was seeing from Xander at well, all. My, my point is it is because of the things that Xander's done, the decisions, the tough decisions he's made and stood up. It's easy to say that, you know, this guy deserves the, you know, to reap some rewards right now because he's he's been through the tough times and then and the hard work has paid off. So that's yeah. what I meant by that. Yeah. All right. Let's get to some let's get to some picks. All right. All right. Mirfield Village, great golf course. Give our audience, Mr. Stewart. Okay. The condition of the course. What's the weather looking like? And what kind of player are we looking at that's going to win oh, this boy. event? Uh, we will start with the condition of the golf course is pristine. Um, ever since the renovation that they did in 2020, um, the golf course, they have sub air systems under the greens. I mean, the place is state of the art. Every bit of technology you might find in an Augusta national is in place here in order to run mm -hmm. just a perfect tournament year in and year out. So, um, they've got their average amount of rain for May and early June. So, um, things aren't kind of crazy there. Um, tomorrow it looks a little bit up in the air as far as how much rain we're going to get. It's predicted anywhere from like a quarter inch to three quarters of an inch of rain. Now, that being said, that will probably only make the rough more dense and wet and the landing areas off the tee a little softer. They'll be able to do what they want with the green, certainly by Friday, right? If it, if it really pours tomorrow, they might get one day of somewhat soft greens, but, but overall, um, I, I think it's going to be extremely scorable for what Mirfield Village Golf Club can be. I mean, last year it was definitely on edge. It was super crispy. Um, the weather doesn't look quite as hot and quite as arid as it was last year. 
So I, I, I think, I think you get to a dozen and you're, you're part of the conversation come Sunday, give or take a couple. Okay. And, uh, and wow. I, and I like that because we want to see some, some scoring here and we want to see some bogeys. Um, you know, I, I, I don't like watching golf tournaments that don't reward the best players. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and we talked about this, but I'm going back there because it really bothers me. If everyone complains about Valhalla. But is there any doubt in anyone's mind when we walked away that Victor, Bryson, and Xander were the best players on property that week? Right. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. You you might not like the final score. You may not like that the 13th hole plays a certain way for every single player, right? But you know what? Go pound sand, right? We got the best players, okay? Now, the converse of that is a conversation about what took place in Lancaster this past week, right? Right where we have the top 10 ladies in the world average five and a half over par. The top 10 ranked women in the world average five and a half over par in the first round, right? And the cuts plus eight, what are we doing? So mm-hmm. my point is Muirfield Village Golf Club and Jack's leadership, he wants it to be tough. He wants it to be stern, but he allows scoring. He allows all aspects of the game into the atmosphere here, into the culture, into the community, right? Everything from the the charitable side of golf to the competitive side to what makes it tough. You know, what makes Muirfield Village tough? It's the sixth longest course on tour with the fifth smallest greens, right? So you, you think about that. What did Keith just say? Okay, guys, it's 7,600 yards and the green targets are really small. They have sub-air systems and they can make them as firm as they want. So what is that going to say? Okay, well, we need a high apex on approach. And 50% of your approach shots are coming from 175 plus. All right. Well, they hit about 61% of their greens in regulation here. Tour average is 66. So now the ball is going to be around the green a lot. Okay. What are we dealing with there? We're dealing with heavy rough and very, very deep bunkers. It's seldom that we get such a good short game test on the PGA tour. Mm. And that's what I love about this place. So yes. feature number one is definitely long iron play. And mm-hmm. and this is a good preview for next week. And these places couldn't be more polar opposite in the perspective you get when you walk up to them and have a first impression. But guess what? You're going to need your long iron play next week at Pinehurst number two. The second thing yep. is you're going to need your short game. Now, granted, it's going to be a different style of short game, but still control with the wedge and an aptitude and an acumen in and around the green complexes and an understanding of how to be creative and hit certain shots, certainly. So those are the two, like if you look over the last five years since the renovation, right, those are the two things that rank out the highest for the biggest gains by the winners. Now, there's a couple little things that I love about this place. One, it really measures total driving. And I think the best test of all that are the four par fives, right? And, And the TV doesn't do it justice. And if you've never been out here, the, the, the par fives are actually three shot par fives. And that's not to say that guys won't blast it down there and give it a shot, but Jack does a really good job of testing people and their scoring and scrambling ability inside 50 yards to the hole. Jack was one of the best pitchers of the golf ball there was, and you better believe that he's going to test you to do the same thing at his own, you know, favorite golf course, you know, his masterpiece his his ode to Muirfield over in Scotland and Augusta national golf club. So at the end of the day, I think the par five scoring is kind of a cool thing. If you get into 12 under par and you have four par fives a day, um, that that's certainly a place you got to take advantage of. I mean, the finish here, it's like the golden bear beast. I mean, it's like the golden bear beat down, uh, you know, like uh, 16, 17 and 18. Unbelievable. They're, yeah. they're, I mean, everyone talks about the bear trap and all these other stupid names they make up. But at the end of the day, I mean, this has got to be the toughest finish on tour outside of a major. I mean, and even if you include the majors for the most case, I mean, those three holes are near impossible. So well, the back uh, nine, the back nine's got the five, the five hardest holes. Yeah, I'm the whole thing's tough, you know, and it's a great and it's a great test. And and therefore, that's why since the renovation where in 2019, when Cantley shoots 19 under Jack says, we're done, we're ripping the whole place up. And you got to give the guy credit for it. Right. (laughs) The guy's the patriarch of golf. Right. He's like, we're done. We're ripped. I mean, you remember in 2020 when they they showed uh, it on TV, remember right when they when they got through in the front nine. Yep. Yeah, and they're ripping the place up. So yep. I, I love I love that he continues to not complain about things like, oh, let's roll the ball back. Let's do this. The guy uses design features. He's really thoughtful about the process and they're pushing the envelope. And, you know, they're not making the place terribly longer. They're making it more challenging. They're forcing a lot of shot making. And that's what mm-hmm. you love about this. So at the end of the week, um, 
I guess in summary, in one sentence, it's Scotty by 10, but you know, in, in all reality, in, in all reality, um, I, I think that the big three that are up there right now, um, provide, provide a valuable challenge. And I, and I think it's going to be a really, really entertaining week. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, I did too. The back nine is just brutal. I mean, you mentioned the last three, 18 is the hardest hole. 16 is the second hardest hole. Number 10, great hole is uh, the third brutal. hardest hole. Uh, 17 is the fourth hardest hole and 12 is the fifth hardest hole. You mentioned the four par fives. That's five, seven, 11, and 15. You've got to make hay there. Four easiest holes. You've got to make hay there. Absolutely. Uh, You mentioned, we mentioned a lot of stuff, but the two that really, that I've made note of um, is no, 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 no. I love it. That you mentioned was total driving and how it rewards that. And then also a short game test. Yes, thank you. A short game test this week. Also a short game test next week. I've played Piners. That's a short game test, number two. And the guy that just comes to mind is the guy that won last year, right? I mean, you know, total driving. He checks those boxes pretty good. (laughs) Dude can drive it. But he also, um, you know, he's improved obviously here, or he did, and then left his coach. Don't get me started on that. And now he's back with Joe Mayo and – you know, I've got, I've had a, a few notes like, what exactly again did he do? Well, here's Victor Hovland, folks, for those watching. You can see their um, short game back on track, positive 1.5 yeah. last week after, you know, losing strokes. But look at this. Look at his head forward. I mean, that's it pretty much, right? And there's some other little things, but, you know, he's just letting that head kind of fall left right here. His head goes left in the backstroke. Yeah. And he just stays there and turns and hits it and moves a low point forward, a little steeper attack angle. Off we go. Back with Joe Mayo, the defending champ, who last year I was cheering so hard for Denny McCarthy, who I had the win ticket on, um, and, yep. uh, and Denny finished second. And gosh, I'm not sure we've heard from Denny since. Um, but, uh, you know, Hovland, look, he's he's Man, he's a guy back on track, probably Denny? feeling pretty good. No, I'm not going to. I'm not ripping Denny. I'm Denny was second Denny. at Valero, lost in a playoff no, to second. Akshay. He I'm was second. sixth yeah, at Wells Fargo. Come on. All right. Come on, Denny. Denny's good. He hasn't played quite like he did last year when we were, you know, touting above. I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, True. let's get to our first look. I'm going to give you the floor, right. Mr. Stone. Here it comes. Clicking the mouse. All right. I'm ready. It's Memorial Week for Morikawa. Oh, there he That's is. where I'm going. Mr. Morikawa. That's where I'm going. Yeah. Playing some good golf. Back with his... Back with his former coach and playing yeah. good golf again. Victor oh. Hovland, Colin Morikawa going back to the basics with the guys that helped him get there. Let's talk about the last five starts. Third at the right. Masters, right? Then ninth, 16th, fourth, and fourth at Valhalla, which, correct me if I'm wrong, was designed by Jack Nicholas. We were using yes. Muirfield Village as a comp a couple weeks ago at the PGA, so the converse of that has to be true. Right. And you love pointing out the fact that and you're completely right that Victor transformed his game because he became a much better short game player. Well, over the last five starts, Collins gaining nine strokes against the field total, but he's gaining two and a half shots around the greens, which is unheard of for this guy. Right. His short game was always a weakness. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was a good opportunistic putter, but at the end of the day. He was his his short game was the weakness. It was like Colin should win at Augusta, but he can't because he doesn't have a good enough short game. This guy has a good enough short game right now, and Mm -hmm. it's really impressive. So fourth at Valhalla, Nicholas Design. I mean, he won at Concession, Nicholas Design. We we can go down. He won the work day during the COVID summer at here, Muirfield Village. It's the same exact golf course. Last year, people forget that he was on the leaderboard. And remember, he withdrew on Sunday with back spasms. The guy was part of the conversation to win. Everybody forgets about that because he's not at the top of the leaderboard. They go back, they look at the top 10. They go, oh, well, these guys are these are the guys I'm going to feature again this year. Well, look, go to the bottom. It says WD. The, the guy was in contention, and he had to pull out. And the scariest thing about all of this is that he's done all of these this this recent trend he's done all of it without the best part of his game which continues to get better so i love this fit for the first yep. click this week yep i think it's a good pick um really happy to see xander playing well rick sexton house his his uh longtime coach yep. um young through college into his pro days couple major championships you know colin switch kind of struggled a little bit comes back and, and it's no indictment on any teacher these things happen and i sure. think 
it's always interesting when you have all this success and you feel the need to switch and it happens so many times and so I, often they go back and they kind of reconvene and sessing house is an interesting guy he, he's not oh, a yeah. real technical guy i think he's very smart i had him i had him on the podcast um keith you know before he did probably another hundred podcasts i mean i knew who rick was and working with colin sure. and and this was a couple of years ago and i had him on and we had a really conversation i learned a lot from him just about the journey of of morikawa and how like colin would he he drew everything in in college everything was a draw and then yeah. he turns pro and everything everything turns to a fade um not a real technical guy yes they use some things here and there um but it, it's just it's back to what works you know and and i'm really happy to see colin has went there I think Steven Sweeney's done a good job with this putting too. I still think they're working together. I think there's been some steady progress there and, 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 and Colin looks comfortable with that. But to your point, his short game has really improved. Um, yeah, that's a, this is, this is a good pick here. When you send it to me, um, I'm in total agreement now for my first look and look, people can change. People can change. And I know I'm going short odds here, but you may recall back in 2022 when Xander won the Travelers, right? Sure. Which is, which is in a couple weeks. What did he do the next week? His next time out. He won the Genesis Scottish Open. So Xander Shoffley, when he gets going, folks, he gets going. Yep. And he has to be, right now, the most confident that he has ever been, ever, in his career. Because he's hitting on all cylinders. I mean, these changes, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but by God, listen, if you have never listened to this podcast before. You see that picture on the left, how that club's hanging left, this short turn. These guys, amateurs, they get short in the turn. Club gets pointing too far to the left. There are so many guys that keep this thing lengthened out and down the line, and Xander is one of those guys. It's added a tremendous amount of length to his driver. Yeah. Um, and he is a ball-striking machine right now. Listen to this. The last two events out, Wells Fargo, positive 5.6 off the tee, positive 7.5 approach. PGA Championship, where he won. Positive 5.2 off the tee, positive 7.8 approach. This dude is hitting his driver long and straight. Check. This dude, approach game, dialed in. Check. Short game, he's fine. Putting, he's fine. I think Xander keeps it going and uh, gets the win. See, I can change. Look, look, you know, I've been critical and i was like look i can't pick xander i'm not picking xander we never have this conversation you know six seven eight months ago no but here we are and it was in this comment and my narrative changed before he won the pga championship um that's he's true. on fire he's that's on he, he's 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 coming around he's moving in the right direction i love where xander's going i love where colin's going couldn't be happier for those two guys um xander's never had a top 10 at memorial that doesn't matter yeah okay doesn't matter all right Okay. Fair enough. If it doesn't matter, we could. I owe you a bottle. Of wine. I owe you a bottle of wine from last week too. <laughs> That's fine. The um, um, I just to go back real quick on Sessinghouse, and I think this is yeah. unique. Yeah. A, a unique thing about modern coaching. Um, I know Rick really well. He's a PGA member, and he's somebody <laughs> that that I have actually spent some time with because Rick is a performance coach. He isn't just Colin's swing coach. He's also his mental coach. And I think that really is what has kind of set him apart uh, no in, a, in a modern sense of how to treat these athletes. Right. So I went and sought out Rick cause we had met through our PGA circles or whatever. And, you know, I do all of these performances and uh, although I'm not hitting a five iron, right. I need to be on my game um, for long periods of time and be able to speak succinctly and, thoughtfully and and do the things that you know people are tuning in in order to hear and i've worked with rick on a number of occasions um for my own sort of performance coaching and he's sure. just fantastic so i couldn't be i couldn't be happier to see him come back into the fold <laughs> and see this stretch run that they're on right now and i tell you with, with that short game and with that fade off the tee he is in my mind the favorite this week and next week to somebody who can really contend against scotty uh, yep. I mean, because his level of accuracy from long range with the irons, and now you back that up with his ability to, you know, 
chip and putt the way that he's doing it, whether it's mm-hmm. short grass, mm-hmm. long grass, et cetera. Um, I, I really, really like it. And you're talking about two venues where you don't have to be the world's greatest putter mm-hmm. in order to win, but you have to do those other things exceptionally well. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Did last week or no, two weeks ago at the PGA had Xander ever won the PGA championship before? No. Okay. I just make sure. So you're asking me if he's ever, if he's ever won the Memorial before. And I said, no, it doesn't matter. But then two weeks ago, no, no, no. no. I, I, to be specific, I asked you, had he ever finished in the top 10 before (laughs) I had Xander ever finished in the top 10 of the PGA before. (laughs) All right. All right, let's move on. Drive the ship. So we got, you know, we know we got Scheffler and Rory up there. We know those boys are going to be tough. We know they're going to be there. Look, I'm taking Xander at short hobs. Go ahead and and shoot holes for me. I'm fine with that. Um, We got Morikawa. All right, now we get into Hovland and Aberg and Cantley and Tavis. Steer the ship. Take me somewhere. Um, I'm going to go a little bit deeper because, the, you know, okay. I, I think this is a big horses for courses place. Uh, I think that the, at the end of the day, we have a ton of data um, and history here with which to kind of come up with a hypothesis uh, year after year. You know, there's only been one guy here that's ever repeated as champion. Um, you know his name. His name's Tiger Woods. He, in fact, he did it <laughs> twice in a row, so he won three years in a row. But other than that, um, it seems to be a little bit of a rotation of really, really good ball strikers and players that go through here. And one of those guys is Hideki Matsuyama. Yeah. And the reason being is that he has this this unbelievable short game, which is totally underrated. Um, not the greatest putter, but he also is an extremely good high apex long iron player, driver of the golf ball, really well rounded outside of that flat stick and you know obviously good at augusta this place was designed with augusta in mind so all of these things kind of kind of you know pan out but there's been so much attention on hideki since riviera and he hasn't we we keep talking about him we keep bringing him up and we don't we haven't really been getting the performances that we want to and i think at times hideki's at his best when he's under the radar so I'm going to leave him under the radar this week. Mm. I mean, he, he started well last year. He was 65 in the first round, and he had a rough weekend. Now, the place got really hard. But again, like, I love Hideki in that Riviera scenario when, like, on Sunday he just goes nuclear and everybody's like, whoa, here we go. You know, like, mm-hmm. Hideki shoots 62. But if you like a guy like him that's a really good ball striker and kind of reminds you of him, wins at similar places, right, in that price range and in the middle of the board, I'm going deep on Siwoo Kim this week. Yeah. You know, and I, and, and I know <laughs> when I had, I, I, yep. I, I was critical of, of Xander just there and you could equally mm-hmm. throw it back at me and say, Siwoo can't putt. Okay. Well, let's talk about a couple things. I'll get to that point in a second, but Siwoo has been great this year. He's top 15 mm-hmm. T to green has been all season, right? He's been really, really strong. Number two, one of the strengths of his game outside of the fact that he could thread needles off the tee. I mean, he is what literally when I go out here, he is one of those guys I love to watch hit driver because he hits it so straight. I mean, he works for the Highway Commission. He just paints lines, man. It is unbelievable. But he's top 10 in scrambling, bogey avoidance, and for a short game around the green. You know, so like it to me, he checks a lot of boxes there. So then I go and I go, all right, this guy can't putt. And people are right. He can't putt 90% of the time. But then I started looking at some of the comp courses that I love for this week. And I think it's really important because there's some abnormal comp courses that most people wouldn't think of when it comes to Muirfield Village Golf Club. I mean, it's easy to go to Valhalla. Okay, fine. Right. But how about like in the Amex on the Nicholas Tournament course? Right. Yeah. He He won there. He went nuclear there. Went nuclear. I mean, but he putts good there all the time. Right. Okay. Let's go to a place. Let's go to another. Let's go to another great comp for this golf course. TPC Sawgrass. Siwu putts good there all the time. Augusta National Golf Club. Siwu putts. He, he yeah he won the players. He he putts good at the Masters every year. Like good enough. I, I don't need this guy to go seven over. You know plus seven putting. I need him to go plus two because his right. ball striking is that much better. Right. And then another one is and, and a lot of people don't grab this comp for this course. But there are a ton of parallels between the leaderboards of TPC Scottsdale and Muirfield Village Golf Club. Ricky, Cantley, Scotty, mm. Rom, Hideki, Brooks, all these Good guys, they, they, played, <clears throat> they played great in both places. So when I, so when I was diving down because I was on, I was on a, like a Siwoo Kim ski slope, right, getting deep in the data, and I was like, man, I go, the only places this guy putts good are also good comps for Murfield Village. And if I'm looking for value in a signature event 
And I don't think Kurt Kitayama is walking through that door anytime soon. I think this is a guy in the middle of the board at roughly 60 to one or so can sneak by some people. Everyone is going to be chalky on Hideki and the guys in that range. We're going to hear about Russell Henley and all of these other people. But at the end of the day, I kind of like where Siwoo's at. His trend, just like Morikawa, not as good, but that's why his odds are higher. But it could happen. <clears throat> Yeah, he's got a he's got a couple positive three point ones stroke game yeah. putting in the last uh, five years. What has he got? Four top twenties in the last four straight top twenties here on property. Yes. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It, yeah, there's good, there's but... there's something about the greens here that works yep. for him. No, you're right. You're right. Players, just this year, he was six positive four point eight. Of course, he won the players. Um, yeah. he won at Sony where he was on fire there. We, his, his ball striking was, was insane. Um, the Amex, as you mentioned, positive 3.6 putting. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's checked out nicely, um, on those types of slopes. So yeah, I like Seawood here a lot too. I think that's a, I think that's a really good bet. Now, is he going to go up there and, um, is he going to beat Scotty? Uh, <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a tall task, but <laughs> I think as we start getting down into some of these odds, I I I I I I sign up for that and much more so over Hideki. Uh I'm surprised that you kind of cooled off on Sahith a little bit. You've cooled off there a the miscut. It um, um you know that's a couple more. that's a couple times now. So yeah. okay. So you said you said go steer. So in my mind, we have this recency bias and it just doesn't go away. Like people are still betting Spieth, you know, and in the middle there, we've got Tom Kim and Tommy Fleetwood and Tom Kim's playing some better, you know, Sahith. And there's all these names, but right around there, you've got Ben on lost in a playoff here. Nobody hits the ball higher with his irons than that guy. Right. Um, he, he, to me, like Siwoo, they represent what the season's been all about. Alex Noren, incredible mm -hmm. short game player. Right. Like I just, I, I, if I'm going to go take some chances on somebody that's 50 to one, I, I don't want a guy that's dropped to 50 to one. I want a guy mm -hmm. that's, that's raising his ceiling to get to 50 to one and has, it has a much even higher ceiling after that. Um, that's just the way I view it at this point, because we've seen it happen too many times this season. The signature events have, have had these elite fields and it's it, outside of that. It's been these guys that have really pushed through. A lot where we started the conversation today, like Grayson Murray, right? And I, and I think that this is a good venue for Siwoo to mm -hmm. get it done. And there's other guys on my card, but like I, agree. I would, I would just, I would just rather mess around with a Ben on or 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 somebody like that here than I am going to go down the road with like Tommy Fleetwood again. I just, I just can't yeah. do it. Well, Fleetwood, man, I mean, just last week again, he's right there. What three, four back? I mean, I know Bobby Mack pushed it out there. What four? four clear going into Sunday, but then, you know, what is Fleetwood doubles the first hole on Sunday? I mean, it's just, hey, Jesus. Come uh, we, we had Mac Hughes, right? And Mac Hughes had the lead on Sunday. Yeah, Mac Hughes, yep. Right? After like six holes, he had the lead. So Fleet, that could have been Fleetwood. Fleetwood yep. ejected on the first hole when he hit in the pine trees and he made double. Yep. So let's, let me, like, that's it. Let me share this. Last yeah. five years, okay, for our audience. Last five years at the Memorial. Of course, you know, in, in total strokes gain. I mean, Cantley's been first by a mile. Yep. By in the last five years, by 17 shots <laughs> over Jordan Spieth, who's number two. You just mentioned Spieth, who's down the board. I mean, he's number two. You're going to bet Spieth to win? I'm not. But guess who number three is? Siwoo Kim. So look, Siwoo Kim is a, is a real force here. I, I totally agree with that. He was one that I circled early. I've circled him often. I have bet him. I am all over Siwoo Kim. There's Xander, number four, your boy. Uh, Scheffler's five, two third place finishes over the last three years. Didn't yep. play in 2022. McElroy, of course, you know, will he'll be there. Um, oh, climbing yeah. on the first page at some point. Max yep. Homa, not quite the same version of himself. We've seen Homa compete here, fifth and sixth uh, in 2022, 2021. Yep. We've seen McCarthy play well here. My boy McCarthy, second uh, last year, fifth and 20. Amazing. But where is 50 where is, where is Danny McCarthy at right now? Now, heading into the season, we know he likes these tough courses. It's yep. Denny McCarthy season, the Memorial, U.S. Open. Like this is kind of this is kind of the grind he likes, isn't it? But can we can we get there this week with McCarthy? Can we get there? Top twenty, yeah, top twenty, maybe. Um, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I'm tough. not quite sure. I mean, he, we we're all the, over him last year. I was all over him last year. I was man. I yeah. wanted him to win. <clears throat> I uh, I had I had Victor. Um, 
So I was uh, not all Stop. over him, but, but I did. That was, a, that was an unnecessary needle. That was unnecessary. Well, not, if, if you really want the needle, then I'll stick it in all the way. I mean, I had Victor in a playoff to win. You know, don't don't disregard the fact that we've again had another playoff last year. We've had seven playoffs in ten years. And now you're just event, showing off. Now you're right? just showing off. Well, I just yeah. this is why you, this is why you asked me to come on. Because all right, I, stop, I, stop. We, I, I have we more have to say. To. So we, look, okay, so you've go got ahead. Max Homa, you have Max Homa, Danny McCarthy. Yep. Then it goes Shane Lowry, who's playing some decent golf right now. Uh, Ricky Fowler, no. Billy Horschel, hmm. Morikawa withdrew. Remember, yeah, Morikawa withdrew last year. That's right. Then he missed the cut. I mentioned in 2022. that. He had back spasms. Yeah, he had back spasms. That's, that's right. I'm sorry. I wasn't. Yeah. Listening. You were listening. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Fair enough. There's there's Matthew Fitzpatrick. T. Where's Fitzpatrick's game at right now? Anything from the ground on? Anything from the ground on? Hold on a second. I just lost my. Uh, hold on. A I got a question for you. Anything to share with uh, Fitzpatrick? who right now is is 55 to 1 should be a decent place for him. And Will Zalatoris, those two guys 50 and 6. Any any updates on those two? Like where where are we at with these boys? Uh if it's the you know the, the reports are good from his camp, right? This yeah. is obviously the time of year which which he likes to play the PGA Tour, former US Open winner. Um, right. he's he's played yep. very well on this golf course. His game suits it. He's a very excellent you know, straight, accurate, long driver of the golf ball. Right. And he's a good scrambler, right? Um, he's above average putter. Uh, I, I think, you know, one of the things is that he has a tough time hitting the ball high um, mm. when it comes to his iron game. He's a little bit more of a trapper. And I, and I think that over the course of 72 holes, whereas he could be a top 20 guy here, I think pushing through makes it more difficult for him. And I haven't seen Zalatoris yet this week. Yeah. You know, he still looked like he was off at the PGA, which was the last time I saw him. Um, he's still, he's not, he's not as precise as he has been with that, mm. with that, with that long iron and that, and that driver. I mean, that right. guy was another guy that like Siwoo just absolutely stripes it. And I just haven't seen it. So I'm not sure if he's, if, it, if the recovery from the back, um, is an issue like Jordan with the wrist or whatever, but like just from the, just from the smell test, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I just don't know enough, you know? And, and the other guy I'll talk about from a health perspective that everyone's going to want to know about is, is Ludwig. And, um, you know, we all thought, or I thought, but I, I thought you and I were in, we were in lockstep on this was that going into the, um, PGA, it was just one of those things where like, okay, so Ludwig's played a lot of events. He's got some fatigue, you know, but yeah. he was, he was really ginger, gingerly yeah. walking down slopes with that left knee at Valhalla. So mm -hmm. he's had, you know, three weeks since then. So it will be, I'll be interested to see those guys as the week carries on. Rumor has it Ludwig, it might be moving to Ponte Vedra beach, Florida. Rumor has it. So I sent him a note. haven't heard back yet. All right. So that would be awesome. If uh, Oberg moved to uh, Ponte Vedra, a couple things there. Yeah. I agree on Zell tours. I, I'm not sure. I've got a picture of his putting up. Um, Great pictures here provided by uh, Josh Gregory, his coach. And, um, yeah, just the driver hasn't been quite as clean and his short game. He seems like he's he, he's kind of struggling a little bit around the greens as well. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm out on Will. I know he's obviously a popular name. I'm going to pass yeah. on Oberg. His first time here playing Memorial. Um, so it worked I out at Augusta. <laughs> yeah, you know. it's true. That's true. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pass on those two. It seems like it seems like Finau is getting some, some love in this range. Hey, hey this is. I, I need to let it be known real quick. Uh oh. Corey Connors had his best putting week ever last week, ever. Positive six point nine putting. Yeah, I just let it be. Known. Corey Connors takes a beating with his putter, and that dude made some putts last week. Corey. Great job. He does it again this week. He'll be right there um, and competing as well. So good job for Connors. You know, Finau's getting some play. Look, look, there's Siwa at 50. We've, we're all over him. There's Tom Kim. Look, he's he's he seems to be trending a little bit as well. Yeah, um, he has been. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to play him. Ben on, you mentioned, lost in a playoff. Um, man, Spieth at 50 has gained the most strokes here in the last five years. You, you going to go there to win? Oh. I've heard some Sep Straka names uh, across a little bit on some different shows. Yeah, there's sure. Shane. There's Shane Lowry at 60. McCarthy's been competing here to win his first PGA Tour event at 66. Horschel has won here at 60. Yeah, Jason Day's won here, right? Did Jason Day? Yeah, Jason Day won. 
Maybe I'm thinking of. He hasn't, he hasn't won here in the last 10 years. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. Well, don't, don't quote me on that. All right. Now he, we're getting the, fact, the 80s he, and 90s. We're getting into the 80s you, and 90s now. You hear J-Day a lot because he lives here in Ohio. And I, th- there, yeah. I think this is this is one of the places that he's a member of. But that's mm-hmm. that's that, you know. Um, yeah, the one guy that I hit. Look, I just I'm going to pat myself in the back here real quick. The one guy that I said that was going to kind of turn around last week and hit Sam. I told you, not the end, I told you that he was going to. Um, I told you that he was going to look more like Sam Burns. And he looked yeah. more like Sam Burns last week, top 10. So I was happy to see him um, play well. He's coming in at 40 to 1, but I'll pass here. <laughs> yeah. You got to drive the ball and play here. Yeah, Total drive. I'll pass here. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll pass. You here. know, I mean, uh, it's just, for me, it's as simple as would you pick Sam Burns to be your foursomes or your four ball partner? Yeah. That guy makes birdies like there's no tomorrow. So I'll take him in four ball, but I don't want to play from where his drives go. So I'm not taking so are we gonna go, are, are we so. are we just not gonna go past 80 90? We're just we're just done I got, at I got one oh, you got fun one further down oh, the board. You got a name. I, I got, All right, let's okay, take it. I got one for you. Um okay. how about we roll with a little Lee Hodges Ooh, at 220 like to one? Name. Speak to, me, to Lee one. Hodges. All right, well, he was, all right. So 12th at Valhalla, right? Okay. I mean, we're talking about we're talking about a guy who's 200 to one here. All right. So everyone in the comments, just keep it chill for a minute. You know, like it's like, just hear me out on this Valhalla, Nicholas design 12th, right? The guy's been trending lately. Great approach player, right? Very good short game, right? Where did you win the three M got to put the ball in play off the tee. If not, you make double bogey. I mean, that place is treacherous. It's like one of the tougher driving courses on the PGA tour. And he won there and he won there over Tony and JT Poston. And he, you know, what did he have a five shot lead, like going into the final round and last year in his rookie time to Muirfield village, he finished 12th. So if you're going to look further down the board, the way he's been trending in his ball striking and what he's done here in the past gives me every reason to think that, all right. So if you don't want to take him at 200 to one to win, like he's got to be on your placement card. He's got to be a head to head guy. You got to be looking at him as a live bet. Um, he's been doing a lot of the right things and, and you got to like where Lee Hodges game is at. Hmm. That was, that was one name I wasn't expecting to come out of your mouth here today. It was, uh, <laughs> was Lee Hodges. Yeah. That's interesting. See, Cam yeah, Smith, mean, uh, you see Cam Smith nipped Adam Scott in the U S open, uh, in the in the final spot in the in the playoff yesterday coming down the stretch no cam the smith Open. or cam not cam smith. Smith. I'm, I'm sorry cam i'm sorry um, cam davis cam davis jesus yeah no, yeah fellow fellow australian yeah. Fellow australian yep yeah i mean there's there's a there's a side note to that story so so scotty sh- sits at oh adam scott sits at 60th right and he didn't get into this event here so now he's just riding the wave to see what happens but mm-hmm. there's a guy that's inside the top 60 that is unfortunately deceased. And, you know, so mm-hmm. like it, it, you wonder what's going to happen there because if Scott gets pushed to 61 this week, depending on how Muirfield village plays out, um, does he then drop back to 60? Because there's a person who certainly cannot play in the U S open. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. You know, the, uh, back in 1999, when, when Payne Stewart passed away, the OWGR, um, memorialized him for four weeks and then they quietly pulled his name from the rankings. Right. And they're all trying to figure out what to do right now to make it the right thing to do with Grayson Murray. And it looks like they're going to do the same thing, but that four weeks Mm -hmm. for Payne Stewart was in October. These four weeks right now are pretty, pretty important for a lot of people when it comes to the rankings. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how that whole scenario plays out because the, the big storyline that Adam even did it was because what he's played, like, I don't know, a hundred majors in a row. And he had, he's been in every single major since 2001 that he physically could have attended. So um, it'll be interesting to see uh, and to have an Aust- a fellow Australian cut him in that event was, was, was pretty, you know, like Cam Davis probably plays golf because, you know, Adam Scott was an inspiration right. to him. Yeah, and it's like a passing of the torch, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was yeah. interesting yesterday down the stretch. Those two playing for that last spot, uh, yeah. Cam stuffed it in there about four feet. The longest day. Harry Higgs continues to. He's on oh, the field. My God, incredible that guy's heater. Playing some playing some phenomenal golf right now Oof. in the U.S. Open. Harry Higgs wins the U.S. Open. I think 
I mean, I don't know what that looks like. Could be the greatest heater of all time. Um, yeah, well, that's not going to happen. But I know. Um, I but he, uh, I wouldn't put it past having some fun with him at the U.S. Open as a long odds top ten. I mean, look sure. what he did at Kiowa with Phil. Remember, he sure. was right up there. And when he's playing well, he's one of those guys. And, you know, I've done a bunch of content already for Piners number two. You go back and look at those leaderboards, especially since the core um, Crenshaw renovation, when you look at 2014, there's a lot of guys that just are accurate. You know, mm. like, that's it. They're not, it's not, it's not a bomber's haven. It is accuracy and it is short game acumen. And, um, Harry Eggs, I mean, Kiowa, a lot of similarities there, yeah. you know. All right, let's sure. finish with this. Have you seen uh, Snedeker yet in his bald head? I have not. I have not. And uh, even I think if Snedeker wins here, Memorial, he doesn't get in the U.S. Open. So no. it, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Well, Webb qualified, right? So he he finally he did. got in. He, he got, did. He got in the U.S. Open, yeah. He, he spoke about that in Charlotte, how important it was to him. It was this, It was his number one goal of yep. the year was to qualify for – uh, North Carolina U.S. Open. So mm-hmm. good for him. All right. I like it. That's the memorial, Mirrorfield Village. You're going to get yourself a milkshake, uh, get yourself a little rest. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't, don't. You've got, a, you've got big three weeks ahead of you. So you can't be just staying out late and, you know, coming in early, staying out late, coming in early. <laughs> hey, you know, same, same severe energy. You got a big week next week in Piners, and then we need you to bring it for the, the signature event of the day. I mean, this what a stretch. Are you kidding me? The players got to be our, oh my God, right now. We're I mean, going, we're going so three like, in a row. Boom. <laughs> so the schedule, right? We go the Masters, and then we said, oh, let's try a signature after. And then we go the PGA. Well, let's try a signature before. And now we go to the US Open. Let's just try one on each side. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I don't get it. But, you know, the good news is, Travis, and you know this, next year it'll all be different. So, yeah. You know, who is the who is the commissioner of the PGA? I forget. No, I'm just kidding. Uh-huh. All right. There he is. Key Stewart at Read the Line live from Mirford. We'll see you next week from Pinders, buddy. Thank you. Peace. All right. That's it.